Hello dear students, welcome to Sociolinguistics uh, lessons. Today we'll be talking about Pidgin and Creole. Pidgin is a variety created out of two existing varieties for specific purposes. So Pidgin usually is created for communication, especially in traits. So the process in which Pidgin is created is called Pidginization. Okay. So, Pigeon is a variety that is created out of two existing varieties and for the sake and it is created for the sake of communication, especially in trades, etc. So, Hudson defines, uh, uh, stand, sorry, defines Pigeon and Creole uh, as this, so gives this explanation. So, it is, uh, or these are varieties created for uh, particular and immediate purposes of communication between people otherwise would have no communication language whatsoever and learned by one person from another within the same or within the communities concerned as the accepted way of communicating with members of the other community so this is definition of PG uh, by uh, Hudson okay so basically he says that it is created uh, it is a practical, so created for practical purposes for communication, okay, between people with or otherwise would have no common language. So, when people uh, in trade want to communicate and they don't have common language, they create pidgin to communicate. All right, so pidgin has been stigmatized because it has been associated with slavery. So, pidgin mostly when it was created or when it is created for uh, communication in trade here we're talking about mostly slavery okay that is why here it says that it is stigmatized uh, it has no native speakers so uh, pidgin is just you know the people learn only certain some words okay to communicate but it's not acquired so uh, it has not have native speaker it's not an, uh, an official language of, of a country or of group of people or something so it has no native speaker and this also means that it is socially insignificant so it is not uh, significant socially uh, it has no role in identifying its users so as we know that language define defines its users but since pidgin has no native speakers so it doesn't define its users. It is limited in terms of vocabulary, phonemes, so vocabulary there is only a very few, okay, there are only very few words, okay, that they use people to communicate just for the sake of communication, so they don't have, they don't have a rich vocabulary, uh, not, they don't have, of course, rich phonemes, so very limited vocabulary, very limited uh, sounds, etc. And there are there are now inflection morphemes. Okay, so for example, like inflection English, we say he likes. So this s of the uh, of the third person uh, is we will not find something like this in in pigeon. Okay, so they just use it like they use it for one person. Uh, verb, for example, for one person or, or two or three or four, it's the same. Okay, it's, it's like. It's, it's full of grammatical mistakes, but that's okay, since people understand each other. So the people understand each other, they make uh, deals, etc. in trade, and that's it. They don't care about the grammar of that language. And then we have Creole. So Creole is a pigeon which gained native speakers. In other words, when the children of those who use pigeon acquire it as a mother tongue, it becomes Creole. The process in which pigeon develops into Creole is called Creolization. So basically, your Creole, we, for example, we have like a, a man and women who use pigeon to communicate, and then they get married, they have children. So the children of those parents who speak pigeon, now they acquire that pigeon, but it is called Creole. So Creole is an acquired pigeon. So now, when, as I said, when People get married and have children. The children they, they acquire this creole from their mother tongue. Uh, sorry, from their mothers and their fathers. So it becomes their mother tongue. Okay. Creole has native speakers, 
Yes, it is socially significant because it is part of identity. It defines its users, etc. It expands in terms of phonology, morphology, etc. So, in terms of phonology, phonology, this uh, language expands. Okay, and then it covers all aspects of life and all communicative purposes. Okay, so Creole, unlike Pidgin, has native speakers. It defines people's. Uh, um, I mean. It defines its users, okay, the people who use it. It is morphologically rich, it becomes rich uh, every now and then, and then it covers all aspects of communication, all aspects of life, all aspects of communicative purposes. Uh, I think, the, okay, this is it for you guys, and I hope you are, uh, or you have enjoyed this video, and catch you in the next one.